I thank you for your word. And right now again, I am ready for you. Give me my own change of story. I thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Shout the Lord and say, Amen. Please put your hands together for the Lord and you may be seated. Shiloh 2022, Covenant Highway. Amen. This morning, I count it a great privilege to be able to stand before us to share the word of God briefly. And I believe God that that which he has in store for each one of us shall be practically delivered. That amen can be stronger. In the first message this morning, I believe you have been tremendously blessed. And I thank God because I had a witness in my spirit, man, that as that message went on and prayers were made, diverse healings have already taken place. You know, if you were ever sick, you will know the importance of the healing covenant. I was there, and now I'm no more there. Somebody's testimony shall be stronger. Again, for that powerful word, let's put our hands together for Jesus. Praise God. And in this segment this morning, we are going to be looking at the covenant of fruitfulness. I see every form of barrenness terminated in everyone's life today. By way of introduction, please let's be reminded of the fact that God has a covenant of fruitfulness with his children. The Bible is very clear about this. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28. I love this scripture. See what God said from the beginning. Genesis 1, 28, and God blessed them talking about the male and the female. And God said unto them, the first thing God said unto man after creation, be what? Fruitful. Louder yet? Fruitful. The loudest you can? Fruitful. So God has a covenant of fruitfulness with you and I. Amen. Amen. He declared it from the beginning. And we must always remember that fruitfulness is not reserved for a few people. Every child of God is ordained to be fruitful. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 14. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 14. He says, thou shalt be blessed above all people. That's me. Can you say to yourself, that's me? That's me. Thou shalt be blessed above how many people? Oh. There shall not be male or female barren among you. Say, I receive it. There shall not be male or female barren among you. That includes you and I. He says, even or among your cattle. God sees even your cattle as important. How much more you and I. So fruitfulness is not reserved for a few people. Rather, it is for every child of God. Set me fruitfulness. And please let's remember what is a covenant. Last night, God's servant gave us a powerful definition of the covenant again. We kept on ringing in my heart since then. It says a covenant is a sworn verdict. It's not a promise. It's a sworn verdict. However, 
you and I have a responsibility to engage with it before we can see it come to pass. It is sworn value. But for us to see it happen, we must engage with it. He has said to us over and again, responsibility is the price for greatness. Therefore, we must accept the responsibility to engage with the terms of the covenant so that we can see it come to pass in our lives. Therefore, for you and I to effectively engage the covenant of fruitfulness, we must understand the following. Number one, fruitfulness is our heritage. Say with me, heritage. heritage. Louder, please. Heritage. Psalm 127, verses 3 to 5. Look at what the Bible says. No, children are an heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. Therefore, as children of God, we are entitled to our heritage of fruitfulness. Fruitfulness is our heritage in the Lord. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. I love this scripture. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. It is part of our inheritance. Fruitfulness is part of our inheritance in Christ Jesus. Therefore, we must refuse to allow ourselves to be robbed by the enemy of this our inheritance of fruitfulness. Shout aloud, amen. amen. Our daughter that just gave birth a few days ago to her third child. Amen. When she got married, she and the husband were told, for whatever reasons, they were not going to be able to have children. But I believe God, this among other things, that it is their heritage. Our spiritual fathers and mothers are fruitful. My biological parents are fruitful. So my heritage must not be taken from me. Not going to be able to have children, but in the glory of God, number three has arrived. It is your heritage. The thief is the one that wants to steal your fruitfulness, and he shall not succeed. Upon this mountain, your heritage and my heritage of fruitfulness shall be practically delivered. Amen. Let me hear you shout the louder, amen. amen. It is often said that the child of a baker is not permitted to bear for bread. Amen. Therefore, from this moment, everyone looking up to God and believing him for fruitfulness, Today is your day. Yeah. Somebody might say, oh, me, I already have all the children I need. I even have grandchildren. Thank God for you. But you might definitely come across people that God will need you to minister to for them to be able to receive their own heritage also. Therefore, it's for all. Fruitfulness is our heritage. It's our birthright. None of us shall be denied again in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number two, very important. So the first one is heritage, shout it loud. Yeah. Fruitfulness is part of our reward for service. Part of our reward for service. Exodus 23, 25, 26. Exodus chapter 23, verses 25 and 26. You shall serve the Lord your God. You shall bless thy bread and thy water. I will take sickness away from the midst of the 26. There shall nothing cast 
they are young. That talks about miscarriage. Anyone under the sound of my voice today that has gone through miscarriages before, I've got good news for you today. The last one you had is the last you will ever have. Every baby that might be in the womb right now, I decree full time for you. There shall be no more loss. In case anyone under the sound of my voice is experiencing threatened abortion, I congratulate you because the last one you had is the last we'll ever have. I declare and declare in the name of Jesus that that baby in your womb shall be supernaturally sustained. And our delivery will receive mother and child alive. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. Nor be barren. There shall nothing cast their young. Say me no more miscarriages. Nor be barren in thy land. As you and I serve the Lord, fruitfulness is part of our reward. Every servant of God is entitled to a reward, to a benefit, to a pay you shall not be denied. Amen. Remember, serving God in this respect, we are talking about engaging in kingdom advancement and divorce. As God enables you in various ways, through prayers, on the prayer altar, winning souls for God, helping and the various ways that God enables you. Remember, people of God, that God is not a taskmaster. He pays everyone that serves him diligently. You shall be paid. Amen. I said, you shall be paid. Amen. One of the shillows a while ago, God's servant stood here on this altar and cried over and again that God is not a robber. Many of us across the nations of the earth are involved in kingdom advancement and divorce. Please understand, God is not a robber. God is a rewarder, and you shall be rewarded. Amen. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. We have several examples in the Bible. In 2 Kings chapter 4, we see the story about the Shunammite woman. She was rewarded. You shall be rewarded. Amen. Luke chapter 1, we see the story about Zechariah, the priest, serving God and yet barren. But God visited him and paid him and then John the Baptist came forth. There are many people under the sound of my voice today, your own John the Baptist is coming forth. How about Sarah and Abraham? We're all familiar with that story. In response to their hospitality, in Genesis chapter 18, their kingdom service was rewarded and Isaac came forth. There are many people under the sound of my voice today. Your own Isaac too is coming forth. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Many, too many life testimonies. Even if you have forgotten everyone, you couldn't have forgotten the one of last night, isn't it? The woman that stood here with six children at a go. Six children at a go. How many of them? Six. Louder, please. How many of them? Six. Look at them. Give the Lord a big, big clap offering. Amen. Six children, four girls and two boys in one sweep. That is more than slapping the devil on both you. In your own case, God will slap the devil on your behalf and offer. But remember, according to our testimony, they engage in kingdom advancement and divorce. Winning souls, prayer, 
going to a motherless, I mean, going to motherless babies' homes, and now see what the Lord has done. Your own testimony shall be stronger. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. So the first thing we're talking about is heritage. Shout it loud, heritage. heritage. Second, reward. Louder yet, reward. reward. Then number three is we must make demand for it. Say with me, demand. Make demand for it. James chapter 4 and verse 2. It says, you have not because you ask not. You have not because you ask not. First Samuel chapter 1 and verse 27. Hannah said, and I love this, for this child I pray. And the Lord had given me my petition which I asked of him. So ask and it shall be given. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Seek you find, knock and the devil and the door shall be opened unto you. For this child, specific, direct, no missing what. For this child I prayed. Hannah made a demand and God responded in her direction. So we don't wait to be fruitful. We activate our fruitfulness right in Christ. We don't wait to be fruitful. We activate our fruitfulness right in Christ. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. God's word is very clear. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent alone take it. And how do they take it? Do your fist like this by force. Do it again by force. The violent take it by force. So we make demand for our fruitfulness. You address fruitfulness according to Mark 11, 23 and 24. Speak to this mountain and it will clear off your path. Be specific because God is only committed to answer that which you and I request from him. Shout the Lord, Amen. Amen. Our Father and the Lord, Bishop David Oripo has said over and again, what you don't want and what you don't confront has a right to remain. What you don't want, you don't watch. And what you don't confront has a right to remain. So stop watching barrenness. Confront it. And as you do so, your fruitfulness will manifest. Shout the loud, amen. amen. In the Bible, we have several examples like that. Isaac, Genesis chapter 25 and verse 21. He demanded for fruitfulness, altar of prayer, and God gave him twins. Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was violent. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, did what? Conceive. So it happened to Isaac. What of Hannah? We just saw that example a while ago. And then, how about Manoah's wife? We are told in Judges chapter 13. Judges chapter 13. Manoah's wife prayed, and God gave her something. A one man army. You are the next to testify. Amen. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. Then, of course, number four. Remember, I said number one is what? Heritage. Number two. Number three. Okay, now number four, we must believe against all medical odds. We must believe. Yesterday, God did justice again to this subject of faith. So we are not going to dwell so much on that again this morning. To believe simply means to have faith. To have faith. Hebrews 11, 11. To have faith. Mark 9, 23. We must have faith. Through faith, Sarah conceived. 
Without faith, let's remember, it's impossible to receive anything from God. Therefore, let your confidence in God be unshakable. Let it be unshakable. Release your faith. Last night, among other things, we were told that faith is our access to the realm of impossibilities. Faith is our access to a world of unlimited possibilities. Our access to a world of unlimited possibilities. Therefore, let's go ahead and keep on developing our faith. And barrenness shall be nowhere to be found. Someone has said, and I believe this is very true, that faith is not a pill you take. It is a muscle you walk. We have to walk our faith because without it, it's impossible to please the Lord. Whatever drains our faith in Christ today upon this mountain, it shall be shattered. Yeah. Then, of course, the next one, which is number five, is the ignore negative reports. Ignore negative report. Thank God for medical science. But it is limited. Our God is an unlimited God. Say me, unlimited. unlimited. So ignore negative medical report. I don't know the medical report that might have been given to anyone under the sound of my voice today. Don't let it determine your lifetime. Amen? Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 1. The word of God declares, Who had believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Say, so, I believe God's report. Shout the Lord, amen. amen. Remember the second testifier yesterday. No fallopian two, the first one had challenge, the second one had challenge yet. She stood here yesterday with three solid and powerful boys. Remember that testimony yesterday? Mrs. Olushala? Three boys, yet no fallopian two. Two of them had issues, medically speaking. But God shattered whatever the barrier was. Look at her there. Give the Lord a big clap, clap, clap of him. Shout the Lord, amen. amen. No fallopian tube, no IVF, and yet three boys standing solid and strong. Someone's testimony shall be stronger. Amen. God's report of fruitfulness supersedes any medical report. Therefore, rather than dwelling on those negative reports, feed your spirit man with the word of God. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Meditate upon them. Hold on to them. Don't let them go. And your testimony shall be delivered. Can I hear a loud amen? And then of course, number six, very importantly, remain at peace. Say with me, peace. Louder, yes, say peace. peace. Remain at peace with God and yourself. Because the Lord will fight for you only when you and I hold our peace. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Our God is a prince of peace. Therefore, give no room to anxiety. Don't say, hey, children, hey, barrenness. Oh, when will I have my own? Y your time has finally come. Yeah. I said, your time has finally come. Yeah. Psalms chapter 46 and verse 10. Psalm 46 and verse 10. The Bible tells us, be still and know that I am God. 
I will be exalted among the heathen, I'll be exalted in the earth. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. God works in us when we are at rest. Therefore, let's always remember that your peace determines the pace of your testimony. Your peace from this day, no devil shall take from us. Amen. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. To enjoy your peace, therefore, let's remember we must shun every form of offense. No offense towards God because he's our helper. If we are offended in God, who is going to help us? Don't be offended in God. Don't be offended in people. Let go and let go. We had a testimony a while ago. You must be ready to forgive anyone that you think might have offended you. Let go and let God understand that you cannot have the peace of God until you are at peace with him. And we cannot be at peace with God when we are offended in him. Therefore, anyone has offended you, let go. Say, me, I let you go. Louder yet, I let you go. One more time, I let you go. Shout the Lord, amen. And as you let go, you are letting God in to that department of your life. Shout the Lord, amen. Finally, number seven, rejoice always. Do what? Do what? Number one, we said what? Heritage. Number two is what? Number three? Number four? Five? Six? And then seven, rejoice. Rejoice. We heard in the last message, that powerful message, the merry man is what? Is medicinal. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. The Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord. How often? Always. And again. I say what? Rejoice. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 3. Look at what the Bible says here. Philippians 4, 3. Help those who will labor with me and Clement and with other fellows whose names are in the book of life rejoice in the lord always first Samuel chapter 1 and verse 18 after hannah prayed her countenance was no more sad as you depart from this mountain no more sadness yeah. can i hear louder amen yeah. i said no more sadness yeah. i remember the bible basically the joy of the lord is your is your strength grace to remain joyful at all times on all fronts every blessed day we receive it today afresh in jesus name amen. i hear you louder amen. amen joy is required for us to lay hold on our fruitfulness and therefore from today our joy no one will steal again amen. If there's anyone right now that is under my voice that has been saddled with sadness in any way by reason of anything whatsoever, I congratulate you because from this day forward, the joy of the Lord becomes your portion. Yeah. We must keep rejoicing. We must keep what? Rejoicing. Because that is where our strength is for fruitfulness. Say me, I shall rejoice in the Lord always. Shall the Lord, amen. And as I begin to conclude, I want us to please understand that fruitfulness is not limited to childbearing. Fruitfulness is not limited to what? To childbearing. So someone does say, oh, that message is not concerning me. Oh, I wish this brother or this sister were present. God has ordained fruitfulness 
for all of us as children in every department of our lives. In how many departments? <coughs> in every department of our lives. In our spiritual life, for example, God has ordained us to be fruitful. Check your spiritual life. How is it now? Thank God you got born again 20, 30, 40 years ago. Glory, hallelujah. But 40 years after, how fruitful are you as a Christian? Is your lamb still born a bride? Or is it becoming deep? That shall not be the experience of any of us. Amen. Fruitfulness in our spiritual walk with God. From today, that becomes our portion. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. How about fruitfulness in our career? You are hired for a job today. Two months after, they fire you. You get another one. Pray, pray, pray for me, prophet of God. Six months after, they fire you. In two years, you have worked in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places. Why? Lack of fruitfulness in your career. Therefore, from today, Everyone under the sound of my voice, every form of barrenness comes to an end in our life. Yeah. So please understand, it is the same principle that works for, bar for fruitfulness biologically, that works for fruitfulness in every area of life. The same principle works for our spiritual fruitfulness it works for fruitfulness in our career and the works of our hand. How about your relationship in your service group? How is your relationship with your group members? Are you seen as an oppressor that when he appears, oh, everybody's running helter skelter? The lion of the tribe of the service group has arrived. Everybody take cover. Amen? Amen? How is your relationship and your marriage, if you are married, with your spouse, with your children, with those who walk with you and under you? How is your relationship? Those of you who might be engaged and looking forward to marriage, how is your relationship? Is it God-fearing? Is it progressive in nature? Or is it dragging you down and away from the kingdom of God? The Bible tells us if we examine ourselves and we should judge ourselves because you are the best examiner of your life. Every form of unfruitful relationship today comes to an end. Yeah. You get engaged today to someone and then two months after, the story is over. You get and get to another person, six months after, he backs out. Check it and examine yourself. Now, for everyone under the sound of my voice that I might have been going through broken relationship, today I decree a total turnaround for you. The last one you ever experience by the grace of God as you follow these principles shall be the last you'll ever experience. Amen. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. In case you are married already and you are having issues in your relationship, challenges here and there, wondering why am I even married? There are those who are married and wishing they are not. There are others who are not and wishing that they are. What a contrast. Whatever is contrary to the word and the will of God in anyone's life right now concerning relationship, I command it to see. Say, so may I receive it? As you put these principles to work, I believe God, there shall be many, many supernatural connections. The end of this year, many have been believing God for their marital spouses. God will surprise you. Yeah. Just like
my God embarrass that family with six children at a go. My God will give you supernatural speed. And what men have already thought is impossible for you, God will make it possible in your life. Beginning from next year, there shall be massive, massive miracle marriages. If your own is a man, let your amen show it. You know, lack of rejoicing has brought an end to many relationships. You are never smiling, always frowning. Who wants to marry such a man as that? Who wants to marry such a lady as that? Always full of anxiety. Ho, ho, ho. So when are we going to get married? The man has not even known you yet. Why are you anxious about marrying? Be anxious about nothing. I've shared my testimony over and again that one of the things that attracted me, among other things, to God's servant before we got married is his life of excitement. Full of joy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every time. Amen. So who doesn't want to get married to such a man? Tell me. But when you are always frowning, always looking dejected, always looking sorrowful, but from today, no more. I said from today, no more. In our head, God wants us to be fruitful. We heard that just a few minutes ago. And I believe that we all have received our miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. In your finances and my finances, God wants us to be fruitful. No more barren pockets. Let me hear your loudest amen. No. Touch your pocket like this. Even if you don't have one physically. Say, no more barren pocket. <laughs> Loud as you can, no more barren pocket. Now, in the name of Jesus, I decree an overflow for you financially. I decree an overflow for you financially. So that when men say there is a casting down, you will keep shouting, there is what? Before the end of this year, God will surprise you financially. Some of you came to Shiloh this year with the assistance of some person. By Shiloh next year, you will sponsor others. Rise up on your feet, everyone, right now. Say me no more barrenness from you. Shout the loud, say me no more barrenness. Loudest, no more barrenness for me. In every area of my life, barrenness is terminated. Shout it loud and believe in Amen. So it is the same principle that works for barrenness in terms of having children, that works for barrenness in every area of what? Of our lives. And number one, we said is what? Heritage. Number two is what? Number three is what? Number four is what? Number five is what? Uh -huh, the, the voice is getting low and low and low. Number six is what? And number seven. Lift up your right hand to God. Say after me, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Lift up your right hand to God, Father, in the name of Jesus. Today, every form of barrenness is terminated. From this day forward, we begin to walk in the covenant of fruitfulness. Yeah. You will testify. Yeah. I say you will testify. Yeah. We shall testify. Yeah. Shout the loudest hallelujah. Yeah. Please put your hands together.
prayer for the Lord and you may be said, God bless you. No doubt you have been blessed by that word. Shout, thank you, Jesus. Let's be seated. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. Right now, it is Shiloh testimony time. Let's welcome the following to proceed for their testimonies. Abraham, Elijah, Hadi, Esther, Ruth, Adebayo, from Ibadan, Lola Fadipe from United Kingdom, Mrs. Lola Fadipe, Ruth Sam Adebayo. Are you clapping for Jesus? Hadi Esther and Abraham Elijah, wherever you are, proceed very fast for your testimonies. You are excited at what God is doing. Give Jesus a big, big hand of praise. He deserves all of it. Please come up very quickly. Come up very quickly. Keep clapping. Rejoice. Get excited. My name is um, Mrs. Lola Fadikbe. Greetings from United Kingdom. LFC, that fourth branch. Um, I am a soul winner. I started in Benin City, winning souls for my father in 2015 when um, Covenant Tower started. I came to it. After the Covenant Tower in the morning, I would drop my car, going to villages, going from city to city, winning souls to this God of my father, Bishop David Oyedipo. And in 2018, he enthroned me to United Kingdom to join my husband with a wonderful visa, one of the best visa. And when I got there, I got a job with a British woman. I became a carer, from a carer to a PA, from PA to a nest of key. She passed away this April, 19th of April this year, and everything she got in that country was will to me. To God. For somebody here, there shall be wealth transfer. Praise the Lord. My name is Ruth Samadebayo from LFC Kuala Ibadan. I'm here to give glory to God of my Father. Please, can we have some quiet? Pay attention. Shiloh 2022. I've come to give glory to the God of my Father that delivered me of four years pregnancy. I got in, I took in 2017 and was confirmed by a doctor. Six months after, a woman appeared to me in my dream that you will never give birth to that child because you are breaking the rules in this family. Because many of them are parenting now. And this is my third pregnancy. And the battle began. I came into Kingdom Advancement Prayers, Kingdom Mysteries. And I added to my unit in serving God. And I visit all Shiloh since 2018, 2019. But Shiloh 2020, at the impartation service, my father declared that we should, after the prophetic declaration on our anointing oil, that we should sip it. Holy Spirit now minister to me that from this moment, sip it and rub it on your tummy, which I began. And the baby that has been tied, got loosed and he starts kicking and at the covenant day of vengeance in june precisely 2021 in our assembly 
I keen to every prophetic declaration by his servant, Pastor Emmanuel Olufemi Bangbala. And at the third day, the God of my father appeared and smote this woman to death. The, the woman died. Four months after I gave birth to this baby. After Amen. Praise the Lord. My name is Abraham Elijah. In 2017, I came for Shiloh. I gave all I had that I didn't, uh, to the point that I didn't have anything to go home with. I, then God started changing my story. In 2018, I got a job. Then I increased my kingdom stewardship. I started giving to the needy. I gave for the rural church planting monthly, consistently. I opened a cell in my house. I joined the sanctuary units in my zone. I was just going for kingdom outreaches and then kingdom advancement prayers. Then in 2019, God gave me another job, a multinational job. Then in 2021, God gave me another multinational job that I did not even apply for. Now, in all these things, God has given me landed properties. God gave me a car. God gave me a wonderful and beautiful wife. So I just want to give God all the glory. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Shiloh 2022. My name is Mrs. Esther Hardy. I've come to return all the glory to the God of this commission. I come from a family where no one out of my mother's children have gotten married legally. So I came to Shiloh 2018, believing God for a marital breakthrough. I happened to be the last out of my siblings and the last. So that Shiloh 2018, during the, one of the services, Baba said, those in line for miracle marriages should come forth. I joined her with all my expectations. After the prayers, I went back to my seat and I heard a voice in my ear and said, you are coming to Shiloh 2019, legally and beautifully married. I believe the word. And 20, February 2019, I got engaged. May 2019, I, I went for introduction and then November 2022, I did my traditional marriage, 28, I did my court's marriage, 38, I did my wife's wedding and I came to Shiloh 2019 on the 3rd of December, legally and beautiful married. I've come to return all the glory to the God of this commission. Amen. Right here in this Shiloh, you shall testify. Give Jesus a big hand of prayer. Hallelujah. For those testimonies, one more time, give Jesus a big hand of praise. He's worthy of all the glory. Please pay very close attention to the Shiloh announcement for this hour of visitation. Number one, praise the Lord. There is no doubt that God has been visiting us since Shiloh 2022 began. Send your testimonies to testimonies at davidoedeko.com or testimonies at lfcww.org. Number two, please acquaint yourself with the schedule of services. Our specialized sessions take place between 1.30 and 3 p.m and the encounter night between 6 p.m. and 9. Our specialized classes include the following, one, healing and deliverance, which takes place at the Faith Tabernacle Hope Arm, Fathers and Mothers of Nations, which takes place at the Faith Tabernacle Faith Arm, Breaking Generational Causes, takes place at the Glory Tent, Breaking Marital Siege, takes place at the Honor Entrance Tent, Academic Breakthrough, takes place at the Hope Arm Tent, Business and career turnaround takes place at the youth chapel and building an exemplary family takes place at the Faith Tabernacle Love Arm. Number three, praise the Lord. Please follow our authentic social media handles which are displayed on the screen. 
for information on, 20, on Shiloh 2022. Also, use hashtag Shiloh 2022 and hashtag Covenant Highways to share all Shiloh 2022 contents on all social media platforms. Number four, please be informed that the Yoruba translation takes place at the Youth Chapel while French translation takes place at the Hope Wing of the Faith Tabernacle where both live and virtual translation services are available. Number five, Shiloh offering. Let's take note that there are various options for our giving, including giving by cash or by checks. For all checks, they are to be written in honor of Faith Tabernacle Canaan land and all sacrificial seeds in honor of Faith Tabernacle sacrifice. However, in our various assemblies around the world, checks should be written in the name of the local assembly and labeled appropriately. The third option is our electronic giving options, which include USSD, bank transfer, text to give, etc. These channels also offer various currency options. You may also access these channels through the URL that is displayed on the screen. Finally, number six, you may scan the QR code on the back of the seat in front of you, the banner in, in any of the tents, or the screens to access all electronic giving channels and Shiloh 2022 announcement bulletin. Note that the bulletin is also available on the Shiloh 2022 website. Jesus is Lord. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God had a son, but wanted a family. He sold his very precious son to create a family. It's time for Shiloh offering. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed him shall not perish. It is quality seed that will guarantee quality harvest. He did not give in jail. Michael, he gave his son. Package the quality offering. You've already had the announcement on how you will give electronically and other means of giving. So follow the instructions that we are giving before. And those of you online also follow. Make sure you are online in giving, otherwise, you'll be offline. Package your offering. And if you have done that, shall we rise to our feet and leave that offering to God? and speak over that offering which you are about to give to him and honor him with your words. Go ahead and just talk to him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship and honor you with our offerings. May every hand lifted at home, online, in church, in honor of you, be blessed all over the world in the name of Jesus. Amen. This point where you are shall be the least you ever be. Amen. And God will lift you far above this level in Jesus' most wonderful name. And somebody who is expecting and have a say, Amen. you may be seated, and they will call on the choir to minister in songs. No matter what you're going 
coming through. He'll fix it up for you, for he knows just what to do. Yes, he knows just what to do. Chain, heal every pain, break every chain. There is power. 
Come on, give him a shout. Put your hands together for Jesus. Please be comfortably seated. Tell your neighbor, I see the chains falling from your lap. Come on, say it confidently. So shall it be for you in the name of Jesus. For that powerful ministration from the choir, put your hands together again for Jesus. Hallelujah. The first two words have come powerfully. And I'm too sure every one of us were blessed by those words. God is not done with us. Another word is coming. Somebody's already excited. John chapter 5 and verse 25. Jesus speaking, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now it is. When it is? Come on, say now. Come on, say now. Now is the hour. It's your hour of visitation. He said, When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and he that shall hear shall live. Whatever it is that may be dying in your life, is it any organ in your body? Is it your business? Is it your family? Is it your vision? Whatever it is, as God's word comes for now, it will hear and live in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Jeremiah, Ezekiel saw the dry bones. And the Lord said, prophesy unto the dry bone. And life came. God's word is life. As his word is coming via his servant this morning. Whatever they have called impossible, it is overturning to a testimony in the name of Jesus. The good news is this. No matter where you are in the crowd, either on ground or anywhere globally, God has your own word. God has a word for every person. I don't care how long that situation may be. God may not be too early, but he can never be late. He's a present help in time of need. As God's word is coming now, you are receiving your testimony. 
Rise up on your feet and pray, Lord, send my own word now. In this hour of visitation, send my own word now. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Send my word. Send my word, Lord. Send my own word. Send my own word, Lord. Send my own word now. I'm receiving my own testimony now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayer. With great expectation from our hands, shall we welcome God's servant, our Father in faith? The apostle said over this commission, Bishop David Oedekwa, put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Would you lead in this worship song? We are standing on holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. We are standing on the holy ground. And I'd like us to once again reush ourselves into his presence. Praise God. The day I will stand to deceive God's people for any reason will not make me on the earth. You can't be lying and not know. You can't be deceiving and not know. I'm glad that the word he gave me to teach has not only been proved in my own little life but in the life of multitudes. Anyone trying to kill me is wasting his time. Too much of replication of grace by his grace by his grace I saw the army coming November 29 1983 in Kaduna the Lord gave me Joel chapter 2 where we worship God if you remember November 29 1983 I saw an army rising the kind the world has never known. I saw them rise in the midst of darkness and gloominess. I saw them with exceeding strength. And I'm alive to see them. With men and women. Multitude. Ministers, members of the body of Christ. Murudish Ange Pangalo Rabel. Thank you. Having received this ministry as of obtained mercy, we fail not. We have refused to be trapped by things of dishonesty. We're not walking this walk in craftiness. I'm glad to see massive replication of grace. From far and near. I was in Tulsa. I took the grace from far and near. For those whose hearts are sincere, so the grace. I saw a Nigeria living in Nigeria giving a seed of one million dollars at a time in this church. I saw one casting a seed of one billion at a time in this church. I saw. Anointings for ministry just spread it like fire. We are standing on the holy ground. I'm not perfect. That's about the spirit of just my made perfect. But I'm longing day and night to be more like Jesus. To please him. To honor him. I was up in the room, I had my wife teaching. I said, look, Grace. Look at Grace. The first one to hear this vision from me 
You can enlist as one of this army of giants if you care to. If you care to. But I announce to all the devils in hell, their doom day is finally here. Thank you. Whatever is holding down the giant in you, must give way this time. The days of ups and downs in your life are finally over. But grace, grace shall be on the increase as we keep on connecting with the world I'm putting the world to walk in faith and my God. Believing in the prophet sent to us. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Believe in the Lord your God, you shall, pro shall prosper. And believe in his prophets, and you shall prosper. Believe in the Lord, you shall be established. Believe in his prophet sent to you. It's not getting nothing from you. We are standing on this holy ground. Yes. May no one end here, going out from here, a mocker. <laughs> if you be wise, you'll be wise to yourself. If you scorn, only you will bear it. This is grace. I saw me in people, the grace in me. Working in people actively, productively, fruitfully, profitably. I saw it. I'm eager to see that in you. My eagerness is to see this in you. We are not deceivers. It's our testimony is this. First Corinthians, second Corinthians. Is it Second Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. The testimony of our conscience. We are not. Let's try to do something to make somebody happy. We're standing on holy ground. Today is your day. Some things have been transmitted. Many more things will still be transmitted. You are not living here the same way you came.
Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Let your presence be manifest to everyone under this meeting right now. Yeah. Let it be validated by showing us again the path of life. The blessedness of his presence is access to the path of life. Shows. In thy presence is fullness of joy. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence. In thy presence. You show me the path of life. In thy presence. Don't raise money, my son. Raise men. Shows you the path of life in his presence. I'm glad to follow that part of life, to see men and women changing levels supernaturally by hearkening to the world that is taught. Any mountain I go preken on now, wherever you see faith walking, know that the conscience is approved. The conscience is approved. Faith doesn't walk with a dead conscience. It's a holding faith and a good conscience. Hmm? Which some have ignored and have made a shipwreck of their faith. Faith does not work without a good conscience. Wherever you see faith working, know that a good conscience is behind the same. 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 A good conscience behind the scene. Where well, faith is not working, the conscience is questionable. Amerudiga, kanko pakarian, ezuzi arubaka. You you are calling on God in the afternoon. You go after native doctors in the night. It won't work. Memo poku trundiga. You are changing books to make money. It won't work. You are casting us passion on your pastors. It won't work. Check it. Check it. Wherever faith is not working, the, the conscience is in question. Bruto Bagata, Craig Tonori and the town. Minus. People have hurt me diversely, but I vow not to go out of my way to hurt anybody. People have cheated on me diversely, but I vow never to cheat on anybody. Faith won't work with a questionable conscience. Faith will never work with a questionable conscience. Yes, 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 yes. Paul said, I can exercise my conscience. Yes, yes, yes. Exercise myself. To always have a pure conscience, both towards God and towards man. Thank you. God is never questionable. We are the only questionables. True it is here. In the precious name of Jesus, whatever is making your faith ineffective, on this mountain, as you renew your mind with the things you are hearing, Things will start changing for you. Please get seated. It's brought me to the apostolic phase of my calling. My mission is to defend the gospel of Jesus till I go to heaven. And I know in the name of Jesus, according to his agenda, the church of Christ will be going from strength to strength. The gates of hell notwithstanding. Amen. 
Get ready, we are in the days of rising giants in the body of Christ. From all spheres of life. Nineteen eighty one, he launched me to my prophetic office, October four. Nineteen ninety two, June twenty ninth, he launched me to the apostolic face of my ministry, and I began to see the manifestations with time. What we say on this ground, through resonates, ran the Christian world at the same time. In the precious name of Jesus, nobody's place in this era of rising giants in the body of Christ shall be lost to carelessness. Yeah. I move to read this Second Corinthians chapter four and verse one and two. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not in spite of mockeries, assaults, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not working in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience. In the sight of God. I have that testimony by grace. No games. No gimmicks. All by grace. But grace unabused. Paul said I've not abused my power in the gospel. Second Corinthians chapter one and verse twelve. For our rejoicing is this, Paul said, the testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in this world and much more towards you. From the depth of my heart, I desire that all that is in me, that anyone under the sound of my voice desires be transmitted to them freely, freely, freely. No guesswork, no speaking to impress anybody. You scale adds to my joy. Every new level you experience adds to my joy from inside and outside. Be assured you are on a platform of truth. And by the knowledge of truth, people triumph without sweat. What I've received from the Lord is the same I'm communicating to you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Those who give don't steal. Those who steal don't give. No. No. Why would I never steal? Because I will give it. Yeah. You don't go to steal to give. Yeah. You go to steal to keep. A friend of mine sent a check of one million to us in 1996. I'm a bookkeeper. He's not an accountant. He's just a bookkeeper. He uh, didn't read accounting. He said to me, oh, 
Praise God, somebody sent us a seed. I said, can I see the letter I wrote? And I saw in the letter for the work of the ministry. I said, no, I'm a worker in the ministry. The check is in my name, but I'm a worker in the ministry, sir. I'm not the work of the ministry. He said, the work. He didn't say the worker. He said, the work for the work of the ministry. I endorse that check to the church. Yeah. The work of the ministry where I'm a worker. Yes. My friend, nobody was told. Nobody had it. It's between me and God. No conscience, no future. Yes, I may not trade Kenima and get crangre tono, but you will need the gift of interpretation of tongues to follow some things this end times. Anybody who is misled by the devil to think that what we have is deception has lost out. What he told me May 2nd has not been re-edited. The hour has come to liberate the world from all of the devil. Has not been re it has not been re-edited. What he told me March 1982 has not been re-edited. What he told me September 6, 1983 has not been re-edited. My prayer is that none of us will miss a place in this day of rising giants in the body of Christ. I'll be sharing with us for the time we have here in continuation of our series unveiling the covenant highways of life. And we're looking at the fellowship covenant. The fellowship covenant. I'm bringing away things we may not have considered as part of the covenant of life. The fellowship covenant. Fellowship implies the gathering together of God's people for the purpose of worshiping their God. What we call Zion in the Old Testament is what we refer to as the church of the firstborn in the New Testament. Our text is Psalm 132, the book of Psalms, 132 and verse 13 to 15. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever, and here will I dwell. <laughs> my rest forever, and here will I dwell. I will abundantly bless our provisions on ending supplies. I will satisfy how poor we bled bread. I'll change the stories of men and women that belong to my family in Zion. I will also clothe our priests with salvation, and her saints shall keep shouting for joy. <laughs> For diverse manifestations of my presence, diverse change of stories in all the rest of their life. All this is domiciled in Zion. You walk out of Zion, 
you become a New Testament prodigal son and daughter. Strip naked. Die on daily basis. But in Zion, I will abundantly satisfy our provisions. Second anchor scripture. Forsake not the assembly together of one another, as some of you do. Much more so as you see the day appearing. Through that your peace, your computer peace is not fellowship. You dry up before you know it. Our beyond line is not fellowship. May Purus cannot do Sunday. God does not dwell but in Zion. He does not satisfy our provisions but in Zion. That's a compliment, not a substitute. It's a compliment, not a substitute. It's a study platform, not a fellowship. Be one. You don't want to dry up? Take your place in Zion. I'm coming. God spoke to me to tell you this. Pastors who go and um, emphasizing online. You are not in the will of God. Forsake not, much more so as you see the day appearing. There are those with us in those days in the parables that are not in the faith today because they went out of fellowship. Propoku can train over, we fasted together. There are this vision, life. I did all the teachings in powerhouse. Because you can't see what I, it's me who saw. It's me who will tell you what I saw. A disconnect from Zion is a risk. A disconnect from the fellowship of the saints is a risk to anybody, no matter how anointed he or she may be. I have this interesting, interesting illustration for us that will help to boost our understanding of this mystery. It's important, first of all, for us to know that the church of Christ is the greatest headache of the gates of hell. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall be interested and will stand up to resist but shall not prevail. That's what makes church growth a warfare. Child growth is warfare, not playfare. That is the opposition of the gates of hell against the advancement of the church.
The church is indestructible. From age to age, the church has always come under heavy attack of agents of the gates of hell. Have you wondered that when COVID-19 came, the first place to shut down was not the market. Was the church. It's a calculation of the gates of hell that Jesus rose up to and destroyed. As he always does. Ape Kankeko, the most orderly institution on earth, is the Church of Christ. The market is all commerce. Everybody robbing themselves, moving about. It was in short down the church first. Why the church? The gates of hell. I saw it. I rose as a defender of the gospel and roared and roared until the devil gave up. Many churches have yet to recover. Many have shut down. You know what I'm saying? Many have shut down. We have had to buy church sanctuaries of Pentecostal churches outside this country so that people will not buy and turn into drinking bars. I'm a little cigar, ga, ga, ga. My God. He just came as a wave from the sea of evil to see if he could crash the church. But when the devil saw this multitude, he said, no, I failed already. I fail. And there is no transmission of any COVID 19 or 20. Thank you, Jesus. It's our faith. I surrender. I surrender. And by that faith, many of the sons of God under this canopy took courage yes. and began to say, Satan, no way here. No way here. Thank you can win this war by negotiation. God is too big to appeal to a man to let him have his way. Hallelujah. So a disconnect from the church is not something you want to do. It's a deception of the devil that what is in church that's not in your house. I'll tell you what's in church that's not in your house. Why is that battle so fierce? The church of Christ is the beacon of light to the world. And the powers of hell are domiciled in darkness. The enmity between darkness and light is eternal. hates to see light come forth. So the anger of the gates of hell is understandable. But the triumph of light is unquestionable. I said the anger and the wrath of the powers of darkness is understandable. But the triumph of light over darkness is unquestionable. That light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehended it now. I'm not here this morning as a pastor. I'm here as an apostle sent to this generation. Wake up! Don't play cheap into the hand of the devil. the devil against the church is understandable. But the triumph of the church over the devil is unquestionable. If the church will take its place.
The gates of this church shall never be shut under any condition till Jesus comes. And the gates to his church around the world will never be shut again. My son was shouting of a witch that landed. That was a plane crash. <laughs> that was a plane crash. The plane lost its engine. <laughs> Here on ground, we saw boats landing. Boats were falling without catapult. Falling. Falling. We saw an animal here with the face of a man. In the night. <laughs> huh? Yes, it was killed. The hunters. <laughs> no. When I speak, you die. When I speak to you, you die. <laughs> Can I tell you this? Satan has lost out. Lost out. We are now in the days of his power. When my time is up, we signal. We can stop at any point because all the points I'm saying is in one point. How many Zionists are in the house? around the world today. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise with a shout of triumph. Jesus said this is your hour and the power of darkness. That's the ultimate the devil is God. Luke 22, verse 53. But that light shines in darkness, and darkness can handle it. Satan, you have lost out. <laughs> Ephesians 6, and verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Somebody carried pregnancy for four years. And you said, you won't let go. So God clubbed her. She died and the child came. Whatever has been pursuing you for evil clears the way for you from here. Why the anger of the gates of hell against the church? That is where men and women are rescued from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. He loses out by the day as people step out to accept Jesus. That's his anger. We are depleting his kingdom day by day. He's angry, he's poised. But the Bible says he shall not prevail. It shall not. His wrath is understandable, but our triumph over him is unquestionable. His wrath is understandable, but our triumph over the devil and all his cohorts is unquestionable. COVID-19 came and God said, plan 5,000 churches. And he did. Against the COVID syndrome. Became Kakarada. We never planted that. Every 
Every time you attack the church, he explodes. The church is the stone in Zion. You come against this, you lose out. He comes against you, you vanish. Promote the candy cow. They were still trying to recover. He said, plant 10,000 churches. And he did. COVID-19, where are you? He said, I gave up. Where are you, Satan? He said, I give up. Satan must give up on you finally. So Zion is the city of light where the paths of darkness have no inroad. You turn on light, darkness vanishes. No contention, no debate, no argument. Dumb devil cursed Adal as it was from the beginning and cursed Adai agents that are ravaging the planet out. And no more rules. Bangaloba. They should help me interpret that. The good news is your salvation is your established escape. Amen. Satan has no more power over you. Amen. As long as darkness has no power over light, Satan has no more power over your life. Hey, hey. Thank you, Jesus. His wrath and fury is understandable, but our triumph in Christ it's unquestionable. Come unto me and say, all oh, you that are struggling for survival. And where is he? <laughs> for the Lord has chosen Zion. He has died for his habitation. This is my rest forever. And here will I dwell. So come to Zion. And I will give you rest. Come and meet me here. I don't go about. Come and meet me here. This is my rest forever, and here will I dwell. I will abundantly satisfy our provision, abundantly bless our provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. Come, you have cried enough. Come, come, come. Now, biblical definition of Zion. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 22 to 25. But ye are come to Mount Zion, one unto the city of the living God. Raw interpretation of Psalm 122. 32 and verse 13 to 15. The heavenly Jerusalem. So Zion is located in the heavenly places. And that's where we are seated when we are redeemed. Seated in where? Heavenly places. It's not a social club. I don't have time today. You are walking outside the city of refuge. Anything that catches you is your fault. Jerusalem. They have only Jerusalem. Devils went to one of our churches to detonate a bomb. The bomb refused to detonate. Well, have only bombs don't answer there. Bombs don't answer in heavenly places. Shagaman Akata. 
The devil who will throw bomb here is no bomb. Heavenly places, bombs don't answer there. They don't come back and out of That's not a building. No, no. There's not an altar. No. There's not in Nigeria. No. Heavenly places. The devil is afraid. He's saying, please stop, please stop. I won't stop. I won't stop. Every assembly of the saints is located in heavenly places. With the company of innumerable angels. Who are around the burden of fear him to deliver them? Innumerable company of angels. They are hovering around the whole of this place. Right now, how dare you? You see the sort of an angel you want to cross? Cross to where? You lose your neck. Age Kango Pratisa, Erujagana. If anybody came here with an evil intention, he won't survive the day. to play. Psalm 34 and verse 7. The angels of the Lord surround them that fear him and delivers them. Purushagagagata. I want you to have a renewed understanding of the church. Yep. People who talk just against this church don't escape. I'm not talking about the church of men. There are churches of men. My church, my church, my church. Those are church of men. You can talk anything against and walk free. But the church of Christ. Yes. You, you see one fear. You see one fear. Those who won't fear the church of Christ have lost their future. And many have lost their generation after it. To the general assembly, heaven and earth mixed together. <laughs> to God, the judge of all, who dwells in Zion. To the spirits of just men may perform. Man, folks like Elijah, they are here. <laughs> the fire prophet, they are here. <laughs> fire quencher like Shadrach and Mesha, they are here. Lions must stop us like Daniel, they are here. Men like Daniel, like Gideon, who will blow a trumpet without microphone and the whole nation will hear. They are here. Spirits of just men. The spirit of my father, again, who is gone to heaven, is here. The spirit of Benson Lausa, the lion, is here. Just men make perfect. Assembly. Spirit of just made perfect. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, the one that watches over the covenant. To be sure no force anywhere under heaven in hell is able to break it. He's the mediator. I'm here. He shed the blood of the everlasting covenant to make every covenant of God with his people everlasting. 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 I, Jesus, I'm here. You have come to me 
the mediator of the covenant, the umpire of the covenant, the one that won't let no devil break the covenant. He sent them to where he was going to come himself. And he said, I behead Satan fall like lightning from heaven. When Jesus sees her in the place, Satan falls like lightning from heaven. Praise God. My God. That's the church. And to the church of the firstborn that is written in heaven. When you are saved, your name enters the book. <laughs> Praise God. The church is Zion. Yes. That's the conclusion. The church is the city of God. That's the summary. The church is a family of heavenly citizens. That's what you are saying. Whether they be two or three, we are about to get together. I mean, they are my in the midst of them. It's not church because it's big. When a church was growing, it was indestructible. Two and a half. Huh? Two and a half people. With two and a half people, you can't stop it. There was a service where two people were present. Two staff. And I called and said, how was service today? Said, Great. And so many people were there, he said, three of us. Myself, Steve, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> one was praying, the other one was saying, amen. You can't stop it. <laughs> Wherever two or three are gathered together, you he said, there are mine in the midst of them. Let all angels of the devil hear it. Any further assault on the church will terminate the generation of the individuals. Yeah. We are not talking about grammar, we are talking about power. We are, talking, we are not talking grammar. That's the church. The fellowship covenant, the impregnable body of Christ on the earth. And to the blood of sprinkling that says no way destroyer pass over. <laughs> when they see the blood, he will pass over you and will not allow the destroyer to come in unto you. The angel can come. The destroyer can come. The destroying angel can come. The destroying man can come. There's an invisible sprinkling of blood that takes place in Zion. To the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of heaven. A blood, the blood crying for vengeance. So you don't only fly to torment. They are not only covered against you to torment. You are destroyed Hallelujah. in return. Hallelujah. Vengeance. Oh Lord God, to whom vengeance will not arise. Then it shows up. Where are they? Where are they? Wow, 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 wow. Down and out. The blood of sprinkling, the blood of vengeance. The blood of vengeance. The blood of vengeance. The speaking blood of vengeance. That Zion that the devil wants to cover us from knowing yeah. is not a building. A mm. fantastic building is not the church. The people yes. is the church. Somebody's story is changing. Yeah. If that's you, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. If the church were thriving on the wealth of nations, Nigerians' church would be the poorest church in the world. 
with poverty on the rise. Yet the church is triumphant. The church is not manipulating. There are manipulators. Yes. You can feel them. They are always in lack. The church is a rescue act in time of trouble. Some fellow said, you see, they are flying. I said, I've been flying before you went to school. I've been flying before you went to school. Don't be drunk with political nonsense, political poison. <laughs> Tell me if one dime of anyone, including government, is missing by my hand. She called Lest you say you make Abraham rich. Relax. Relax. The church is not living on the mercy of the world. The world is living on the mercy of the church. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. The only people smiling on this of Nigeria today are church people. Yes, church sir. people. Everybody is broken. Everybody is downcast. The church is boisterous. The church is blessing God. The saints are shouting for joy. Come and give the Lord praise. Don't forget when it's time, tell me so I can get out of here. Satan is weeping right now. I said, Satan is weeping right now. His agents are biting their tongue. Please stop, please stop. I won't stop. Amen. Now, what is in Zion? So you can know the difference between Zion and your house. What is in Zion? Zion is the spiritual service station of the saints. Any vehicle will be off the highway if it will not go for service. No matter the costliness of the vehicle, Is where we are cleansed as in a car wash. You drive your car there, it gets rid of all the dust. I've got all two town. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and then holiness. That service station has a car wash. The state of our car is x rayed. That's why you come to church and the thing you are thinking is just spoken. A family came to church in Kaduna. They were fighting over Suya the previous night. And they came together to church. And I began to talk about, can you imagine a family fighting over Suya? The husband looked at the wife, the wife looked at the wife, and they came together. Not that somebody came to see me before. It's a place of X-ray. Our life is X-rayed for repair. So when you have a word and say, oh, maybe somebody has told Papa, you are wasting your time. God is extending your life. Somebody will come from a dirty house down this morning. But don't go back there or that will be your last opportunity. <sighs> because he slept in the wrong place before he came to church. X-ray. It's a place for servicing your engine. Amen. They change your oil so the thing won't crack. They check the water. They check everything. Can you open the top cylinder of your car? Do you know where it is? It's in church that you are serviced to remain fit for the highway of life. Remember the Bible puts the picture of being a vessel where God piece of engine. We are a vehicle in the hand of God. The party, ye that bear the vessels of the Lord, shall be a vessel unto honor. 
sanctified and made for the masters. So we are vehicles. We go to church, our service station, to be serviced. So the engine won't knock and the car won't park. This service station also refreshes us. So it's in church we are refreshed to remain in motion. We are refreshed in church to remain in motion. God's power is resident in church. He was teaching and the power of God was present to heal them. Luke 5, 17. And the word, and the spirit entered to me when he spake unto me. We are refired in church. We are refired in church. Give us some oil. We can't. Go to them that say. Go to where they say. The church is God's filling station. We are really for to remain in motion. So as you disconnect from church, you run, you run out of oil. You run out of fuel. And you start begging for lift. And if you didn't bring money from your house, you can't take it as it, you start taking. So get out of church, run out of oil. Get out of church and run out of oil. The choice you made. Number three, the church is the center of illumination. When I entered the sanctuary of the Lord, then understood I. You entered the church and light came. Psalm 73, verse 17. Center of illumination. We are enlightened as we study. We are illuminated as light breaks forth in Zion. Can I hear your amen? amen. This is the true light that lighted every man that comes to this world. And that rescues us from the assault of satanic powers. Number four, the church is the city of refuge. Our rescue center. Obadiah 15. Upon Zion there shall be deliverance. Stop there. He has run for refuge. Stop there. He has run for refuge. We had a family here of four that were battered with tuberculosis. They sat in church. And the wife looked at the husband. The husband looked at the wife. For the first time in 30 minutes, they have not coughed. They were coughing blood. They had towed by their bed. They entered into Zion. Family members have disowned them. They entered into Zion without anybody praying. The entire family walked out of tuberculosis forever. Forever. At the first silo, one of the young ladies was here. 23 years crippled. Nobody prayed over her. He said something like a dew of water fell on her. Sprinkling of blood. And she won good. She was here two years ago. When she turned 60, she walked her way to the platform. She got healed 1999 without anybody praying over her. The first shield. Somebody was brought here from Germany. They deported him. They couldn't help again in the hospital. He couldn't excrete. As they entered the gate here, where's toilet? Where's toilet? Where's toilet? God rescued. When are you going by? Say, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. City of refuge. 
why where men slayers are not permitted to lay hold on you. That's Zion for you. An old woman here slept as a blind woman at Shiloh. Woke up in the morning, ah, I see light, I see light, I see light. Nobody lay hands on her. Somebody came here impotent, and I said, Satan has no power over you, and his body came back. Hallelujah. Upon Mount Zion, I shall be delivered. Come on, give the Lord praise. <laughs> That's why the captors won't let go his captive, because if they get there, they will be set free. Please get your family members to become planted in church. Yes. Don't watch your sons and daughters do shakara for you. Sit down. This I gave back to you. Where are you going to? I don't feel. You don't feel what? You don't have to feel. Just go. When you get there, you will feel. Don't watch your children turn their back on God or they destroy your generation after you. Number six is the center of empowerment. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. So we tap into his might in church. The word of his strength resides in Zion. He sends his word to strengthen us inside out. Matthew 4, 23, he was teaching. And the power of God was walking all manner of signs and wonders. Jesus went about Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner. Church is the base of the manifestation of his power. You get empowered in church. They go from strength to strength. Everyone in Zion appeared before God. From strength to strength. Psalm 84 verse 7. From strength to strength. If you want to be a specimen for that, disconnect from coming to church for three months. Your language will become rougher than the area boys. <laughs> oh boy, how are you now? How <laughs> things day? Eh? All of us are suffering. Oh. <laughs> you know why? As the body without the spirit is dead, you have become dead to spiritual things. Anybody can die anytime. Tell you. All that Papa is teaching on longevity, I don't think I believe it. Okay. Believe, believe in shortevity and die anytime you want. The, the spirit has gone. The spirit is gone. Don't make yourself that specimen. No. There are many spiritless ones born in Christians on the seas of Nigeria and around the world. They were once on fire. They have become ice blocks. They still do religious money devotion. Who is the father of Abraham? <laughs> but there is no reflection of Christianity in their life forever. They tell their life, I'm, I'm, their wife, I'm going. That's where don't ask me. When are you coming? Anytime. He has found another house. Life is gone out of him. You go from weakness to weakness as you get out of church. Weakness to weakness, from weakness to weakness as you get out of church. Don't try it. Finally, as we close, the church is the bad place of giants. Psalm 87, verse 1 to 7. 
the giants of this end time shall have their bad place in church. Amen. His foundation is in his holy mountains. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Great things are spoken of you, O city of God. I will make mention of Rehab in Babylon to them that know me. Behold, Philistia and Tyre with Ethiopia. This man was born there. All the men of renown in all spheres of Zion, in all spheres of life, shall be domiciled in Zion. You better shout for joy. shall be said this man was born there this man was born in her and the highest himself shall establish her this is heaven's agenda not a human kind of philosophy this is heaven's agenda this is heaven's agenda this is heaven's agenda, is heaven's agenda. the almighty himself shall establish her it's not government policy how I many they can call you a third world and you are leading the world? They call you a third world and you are leading the world. God is no racist. God is not white. God is not black. God is God. And of Zion, not of America, not of Europe. This man was born there. And of Zion. And of Zion. It shall be said, this man was born in her. Hallelujah. The Almighty Himself. Yes, yes, yes. Shall establish. <laughs> and the Lord shall write. And the Lord shall count. When He writeth up the people that matter on the earth, that this man was born there. Amen. Sugu, Imbra, Bangaka, Brubiane. You can be angry to death, it won't change it. You can be angry, you can build up police against it, it will die. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Is she again? Thank you. Don't kick against the tongues. Don't try to kick a rock. No matter how much a footballer you are. I vow on that God who sent me that the most impactful giants of this generation and the coming one will be based in church. The top most employers of labor shall be domiciled in church. The solution providers yes. in all areas of life shall be domiciled in church. Yes. He said, The Lord shall count. He won't count them somewhere else. <laughs> when he rise up the name, this man was born there. That woman was born there. Ooh. I'm excited. Come on, shout hallelujah. Now, let me finish that and then we pray. Go back to the few verses remaining. Get seated. As well as singers, as players on instruments, shall be there. All the springs of life, all my springs are in thee, O Zion. Whatever makes life worth living shall be domiciled in Zion. Zion shall become the global solution center of the world. Let us go speedily to the house of God and pray 
I will go also. Let's go. Let's go. We have been abusing them before, but we now we don't know where to go. Let's go. Let's go. Amen. That's your family. That's my family. That's where we belong. We have been tormenting the devil in our own face. And when that face is come, we will be destroying the devil. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Satan is weeping up. Yes. Thine is the praise. Mine is the victory. Satan defeated. Satan is weeping. Satan is mourning. We will sing that song. Amen. Now, conclusion. Obadiah and verse 21. And Savior's shall come up on Zion to judge the month of Esau and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Stand on your feet and shout! Come on! Shout! Come on! <laughs> Amen! Glory to God! Now, I like you to covenantly register yourself in Zion. For those that be planted in the house of God, they shall flourish in the cause of our God. They shall still bring forth fruits in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright and is my rock. There's no righteous in the hand. They shall flourish like a palm tree and grow up like the cedar in Lebanon. Unlimited heights. Shagabakande, Trodi Baradesa. Lord, I register to be planted in your house all the days of my life. I register today for me and my house. To be planted in your house all the days of my life. Yes, yes, yes. The palm tree knows no dry season. I register today to remain planted in your house all the days of my life. Abeke Kakataro, Bregelo Karadane, Embraja Jagara, Emblo Borode Sia, Aparaba Kalaborode, Embrapaya Karakatande, Abiketeno, Emelala, Emelala Takrende. Thank you, Jesus. Choir, thine is the praise. Mine is the victory. Now listen. I know my wife and my son in the gospel here understands it. One day I had a challenge on my health. To lift my hands was a problem. I said, Satan, follow me to Zion. Follow me. If I can only get there today, let's see where you'll be. And I go to the meeting, they say, hey, Brother David, you are leading the prayer tonight. And Egan has taught me never to say I'm sick. So I took over the responsibility. And as I took over, and I, one man prayer. Eh? One man prayer. In those days, one man that leads the prayer from start to finish. It's not that somebody do five minutes, another one comes. <laughs> so I faced the wall, and I said, Satan, I check on the list of those who are permitted in Zion. I couldn't find your name there. <laughs> Sir, unusual strength came down on me. I know the list of those who are permitted there. Your name is not there. Hallelujah. What are you doing here? When I turn back to the people, I receive strength and let that prayer to 5 a.m. 
I'm going home, sir. My son, I was hearing my legs cracking. The bones were adjusting. Surgery has taken place. Come on, give the Lord praise. So, what I am teaching you are the things I've heard, the things I've seen, the things I've looked upon, and that my hands have handled. My wife said, I'm leaving this hospital. I'm going back home. She got to this place before Jesus restored her. Not in UK, not in America. Say Amen. I was dying one day in Yola. You were there with me. I said, go and sleep. She said, no, I can't go. I was being like, I said, I'm going to church in the morning. Church, I'm going there. The remaining breath, I'll take it there. Early in the morning. Early in the morning. Church was supposed to be 6 o'clock or something. Sun came down at 5.30. I got to Zion and began to break the head of the devil. Hey, hey. We left the place and went to another place. To Bauchi. To Bauchi. Same day. My God. Zion! The devil is ever scared about Zion. We are going to sing this song and sing it with understanding. Thine is the praise. Mine is the victory. Satan defeated. Now, watch, watch. Get on your toe with yourself. Satan is weeping. Satan is mourning. Satan is crying. Satan is losing. I'd like you to have a jumping praise. What do I call it? Oh, hallelujah! Victory, set on the victory. for joy. That means testimony if you know sees in their midst. A shout connotes a winning team.
police or soldier or stadium security stop a winning team from shouting? Hallelujah song before we leave. Hallelujah. Eh? Hallelujah. Now watch it. Now. Watch it. The shout of joy shall never, never depart of your habitation. There is no one here among my sons and daughters that ever calls me on phone and I have the opportunity of being there without a laughter. No. <laughs> this is the sound of victory. It will remain your son forever. Are you ready? Amen. Now, listen. Hold it. It's going to be a jumping song. What do I call it? It shall be a jumping song. Hallelujah. Come on up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Woo! Hallelujah. Sound of victory. It's the sound of victory. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
things by relating them to natural things. Our earthly brethren called the Jews have remained an crushable nation and forever so by the covenant of God. That covenant was based on the blood of bulls. Now the spiritual Jews that we are raised upon the blood of God's only son is eternally indestructible. Rejoice if you believe that. It's done. Now the grace to remain planted in the house of God, I release it upon every one of us today. Grace to stop St. George as a social club, but to begin to see that the family of God on earth and be able to draw the virtues, the power, the blessings that are there in, receive it now in the name of Jesus. Church is not an offering collection center. In case some fellows have been misusing their mouth and entering from poverty to poverty. Church is not an offering collection center. It's a place where people give as they are willing. A man no pangala. Your native doctors charge you. Yes. <laughs> Jesus charges nobody. <laughs> if a man gives according to what he has, he's accepted. Not according to what he has. Does not thrive on membership, yes. it thrives on the build of the church, yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. Beware of the misuse of your tongue, lest you start suffering affliction. Every sin against that a man commits shall be forgiven him, but any sin against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven any man, both in this world and the one to come. They call this sin unto death. A mopi kange. One woman said, you know, Papa can't survive, except that we give tight in church. Now, this lady lived in Oyo. The husband just walked away. Three months old child. Life came upside down. God said to her, go and meet your father and tell him where your trouble came from. Caution, my friend. Caution. Caution. As a growing pastor, I had money. My money was in my pocket. It's not enough to take to a bank. It's not the kind of banking you have today. So when we are in church, I look at anyone that looks gloomy. We were very few, so I could see everybody. And I will call one of you. That man on number four, towards the wall, on that third seat, let him see me after service. And I would reach my hand to my pocket, and I say, what about tears? What to eat after this service? I don't know. I say, bring out your hand. I place this in your hand. You'll never beg and seek for what to eat again. That's 
the church of Jesus. Yes, sir. We are providers. We are not usurpers. Yes, sir. There are some people that may never prosper till then by the misuse of their tongue. They destroy their fortune with their tongue. How these churches? How the churches? Where did they get the money for? To build a 100,000 church. Shut! Did they collect money in your house? <laughs> you, if you don't want to die on timely death, beware of your tongue. Mm. Even in this church, offering has not been taken. What's your problem? What's your problem? They are flying planes. You have not seen planes, oh? You have not seen planes. You have not seen planes. A time is coming when we move from car parks to helipad parks in churches around the world where you will acquire large acreage for parking of helicopters for people coming to church because of the multitudes. Yes, yes. So if you are now sick by what you see, what will you be that time? You may not exist. Everybody angry with the move of God ends up removed. Amako take okay. Hey, you can't break an here. I owe you this. God sent me to you. I owe you this thing. The day I will corner God's money or your money and call it my own, you meet me on earth. I got on key with that at the year at 20 years old. As the ostrich lays says and actually them not, so it's a man that gets riches and not by right. He shall live it in the midst of his days, and at the end he shall be a fool. Jesus taught me before I came to ministry. Caution! Caution! Those who walk your path yesterday are no more. Caution. They used to be there, they are now down, down on the floor. Caution. Let not your mouth cause your flesh to sin. Let us say that before an angel, it was an error. Why should God be angry with you and destroy the works of your heart? Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 6. Everybody hearing me today, you have escaped destruction. Your generation is preserved. Anyone excited about the move of God in any place always excels. Yes. From today, you will start excelling. Yes. My beloved, we have never known a setback in 41 years. We wish everybody else well. We are not in a competition with anybody. We wish any, everybody well. You may not see everybody around with us or see us around with everybody, but we don't wish anybody evil. That a palm sec loses his job as an admin officer one, would they make you palm sec? No. So what is your shouting for? <laughs> Nobody's success is the reason for your failure. None. The sky is wide enough for two balls to collide. That's the saying of our Bishop Benson in the house. Wide enough. Nobody's prosperity is the reason for your poverty. No. No. You can't do what the world says and not see what the world says you will see. It's in your hand. Lift up your two hands. Hallelujah. I think I've had enough time with you this morning. <laughs> good morning and good afternoon. Zionists get excited some more right now. Glory to God. It's worthy, 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 worthy of our praise. In Jesus' wonderful name. No doubt, everyone is fully loaded. And this load will go home with you. 
The specialized classes commences at 1.30 p.m. and the encounter night at 6 p.m. In addition to all that you have experienced this morning, get ready for greater blessings. Lift up your hand one more time and let's give quality thanks to the Lord. Let's bless his name some more. Let's give him thanks. Let's give him thanks. Let's give him thanks. As you thank him, you are consolidating all the blessings you have received. Let's give him more thanks. To him alone be all the glory forever. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have given thanks. Again, let us share the goodness of the Lord together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Shiloh 2022 and Covenant Highways. In case you are not very sure, please look at the screen or check through the um, information bulletin for where these classes are being located. Or ask any of the church officials who will attend to you with all sense of respect. God bless you. Share your love with your neighbor. Amen.